Hello everyone, this is Reading in Solitude, and I'm your host of Reading in Solitude. Today we're going to be reading a story of my own creation, a Reader X story. This is Reader X Natsuki, Natsuki being from Doki Doki Literature Club, and I wrote this story with the sole purpose of creating a lighter-hearted, and I must emphasize lighter because it's not necessarily a light-hearted story, but it's not so dark as many of the Reader X Natsuki stories that I've found to date. And also, uh, the sex scenes aren't so, um, well, uh, graphic? Not that I have any problem with that. I, I'm perfectly fine with uh, reading about intercourse. If you've heard my Reader X Sayori story, well, it wasn't my story, but my reading of a Reader X Sayori story, you know that I really don't mind the uh, 18 plus category, but I wanted to have a nice story. And this one, it has a, a little bit of a Christmas theme in it, so I think it's quite nice to have a Christmas story. It's not really a Christmas story, but it's around Christmas. It's a December story, and we're in December, and it's almost Christmas, so I wanted to have a nice story, a nice happy story. So without further ado, I've talked long enough. Oh, one more thing, actually. This is my first novella that I've ever written, and I think it's fair to call this a novella. It's about 20 pages. Um, uh, again, enough interruptions. Without further ado, let's start the story. Reader X Natsuki, Chapter 1 The bell rang signaling the end of class and the beginning of lunch. Finally, I thought, enough of that shit. I exited my class and moved down the halls. Not in any rush. I was never really in any sort of rush. I headed to my usual spot near the outskirts of the school grounds. Few people ever went there, save the occasional school security guard or a teacher or student on their way off campus. The school was a dreary gray, and the old acid-washed sidewalks were slippery at this point as the grit had worn off long ago. I passed several groups of friends, and those who walked alone were on their phones. Two kids yelled at another for not having their money. I walked past as they jumped the kid who was in debt to them. There was no need to make this boring lunch period any worse for me, so I just kept walking. I sat beneath a neglected tree that was halfway dying and half overgrown to the point that its branches leaned close to the ground. They formed a small shelter between the trunk of the tree and the building next to it. I plugged in my headphones and I began looking for a video to watch or perhaps a song to put on in the background. I had about an hour to kill while the rest of the school ate and spent time with their friends. The ground was cold, especially then at the beginning of December, but I simply pulled my jacket closer to my chest. A sound caught my ear as I got ready to put in the second earbud. It sounded like somebody was crying. I tried to push the thought from my head as I stuck the second earbud in, and I did my best not to think about it. The video began and the voice of the person on screen introduced the topic at hand, yet I could hardly hear a word of it. Alright, what's going on with this person? I thought. I mean, it can't hurt to check at the very least. Pulling out my earbuds, I set them down quietly and I just listened for a moment. Muffled sobs could be heard from just around the corner of the building that I sat beside. It's probably none of my business, I thought. I got ready to put the earbuds back in, but I stopped, however, as I heard the voice of the person crying. A slight rumble from their stomach, just loud enough for me to hear, came as they whimpered. I'm so hungry, too. The girl sobbed a few more times before saying, You know she's right. Why are you so pathetic, Natsuki? I felt my throat tighten as I debated checking up on the girl or putting in my headphones and just pretending that I didn't hear anything. I peeked around the corner and saw a small girl with short pink hair and little pigtails crying into her knees as she sat behind a bush that grew alongside the building. I swallowed hard and looked down. Could I really just sit there and do nothing? At that very moment, my phone fell from the jacket pocket I had stuck it in, making a dull but quite audible thud. 
The girl gasped, looking over to me, before jumping up, somewhat. She seemed to be getting ready to leave, her face bright red with embarrassment, but I stopped her. Wait, I called without even thinking. We both seemed taken aback by this, and she stopped and waited for me to say something. Uh, are you okay? I asked. I wasn't really sure what to say. And why do you care? She asked aggressively. I couldn't answer her because, quite honestly, I didn't know myself. Well, you see, I I heard you crying and... Yeah, yeah, whatever. Laugh all you want, jerk. She stamped her foot, punctuating her sentence. I mean, I wasn't gonna laugh, I stated as I let my heart do the rest of the talking. I, um... Well... Look, um... I could get you something to eat, I stated. Her face perked up when I asked this, as if the offer meant a great deal to her. I wasn't even quite sure what I was saying. I mean, why was I offering help to somebody whom I knew absolutely nothing of? Maybe there was a good reason that she couldn't eat. Perhaps she had a dental appointment shortly after this. Well, well she stammered. I mean, look, I, I don't have anything on me for you to eat, but I do have some money and, well, you could buy yourself something to eat, right? I said quickly. The girl said nothing and simply looked at me with her adorable pink eyes. Come on, I, I'll get you something. Look, whatever you want. She looked down before walking somewhat briskly over towards me, and I picked up my phone off the ground and got up, dusting myself off a bit. You know, you've got some dust on your uniform, I stated as we walked down the hall, to which she brushed at it half-heartedly. Uh, what's your name? I asked. Natsuki. When we arrived at the cafeteria, I let Natsuki pick the food she wanted from the counter, and I paid once she had her fill. She was a bit reluctant at first, picking only a few small items, but when I convinced her that it was fine to her to pick whatever she wanted, she smiled as she picked up a bowl of rice and beef. We took the food to a table, aside from the rest in the courtyard, which was fairly empty on behalf of the cold weather. I sat across from her, watching her eat, and quickly finishing the rice bowl before moving on to the bread and finally her fruit. She seemed to stop herself at the juice box that she got with her meal, forcing herself to drink it in small sips, relishing after each one. Man, she must be really hungry, I thought to myself. I noticed that she ate each individual item, one after the other, rather than eating them all together. It was a little bit strange, I thought, but I didn't think too much of it. I figured she was just too hungry, really, to care about tasting the food. So, um, Natsuki, what grade are you in? I asked. Terminal, she stated. Why? I don't know. I... I was just wondering, I guess, I said as I leaned into my hand. Me too. Yeah? So what? She asked. We weren't talking much, partly because both of us seemed to be awkward people, and partly because she was quite focused on her meal. I looked at what she was drinking and noticed that she was having a box of apple juice. Do you like that juice? I asked. And if I do... And does she take offense towards everything or what? I thought. Nothing, I just thought you seemed to enjoy it. She sipped her drink once more before stating, Then why bother asking such a stupid question? I rolled my eyes and looked down at my phone. We still had 15 minutes until the bell would ring. I looked up to see Natsuki looking down. Sorry if I sounded rude. I... I really am thankful for the food, she said. Ah, uh, no worries about it, I said to her. It really didn't bother me that much, so much as it just made it hard for us to talk on behalf of her foul attitude. But there's no need to thank me for the food. I mean, you were hungry, right? You needed it. There certainly is something to thank you for, dummy, she said with a blush. 
People don't just do these sorts of things for people, you know. She sipped her drink again, this time finishing the carton. It's kind of something special. And yes, apple juice is my favorite. I looked down to see her bag, and I noticed a book in it. What's that? I asked. I pointed to the book, which was just barely sticking out. Her face flushed once more, as she stated, Nothing. She tried to cover the book by quickly flipping open the top and stuffing it deeper in, but just fast enough the title flashed that I could read it. Parfait girls? I read aloud. I... Uh, I have to go, she shouted. She quickly picked up her mess and walked away towards the bathroom. I watched her move quickly across the icy lawn of the courtyard. I watched her leave before turning back to the table. She left her juice box, and I felt a small pain as I realized that she had left me. I picked it up in my hand and looked it over. A little juice does the bladder well, I guess. I joked to myself as the bell rang. I dropped the carton into a garbage bin before entering the crowd of people who were heading back to class. It would be another two boring class periods until finally I could go home.